I'm Jaden Jefferson, and this afternoon I'm joined by Michigan State Senator Mallory McMurrow, who gave a very passionate speech to one uh, to her colleagues this week in response to another colleague who had sent out an email that had a lot of people raising questions. So, what is your message? Uh, what is their message to you know politicians, constituents, um, you know about what just happened this week? I mean, my message is, is really to everybody else like me. You know, I was very intentional to say I am a straight white Christian married suburban mom. And I think oftentimes people like me get too comfortable, especially when there are attacks about people who aren't us. Right. Uh, so my message is, you know, any of us, it's, it's time to get uncomfortable and stand up for people who are being marginalized, because as long as we stay silent, then hate wins and it's not okay. And when Senator Theis sent out this uh, message, you were clearly uh, shocked by what you were reading. And it seemed like we're starting to see a trend of more and more, um, you know, elected officials in the Republican Party uh, claiming that sexualization of children in a lot of their messages. So where do you think they've gotten this idea from? It's, it's pretty I mean, it, Yeah, it's it's terrifying. I mean, you know, when I got the message, my stomach churned. You know, I've got a one year old daughter and the idea that she could call me a groomer, you know, the idea that it's befriending children for the purpose of sexualizing um, that it's it's disgusting and it's hateful and it's horrific. And it's you know, language that we saw started in QAnon uh, and these really fringy conspiracy theories that there is a Satanist cabal of pedophiles. Um, but now it's out in the open and we have one of our major political parties, both nationally and, and in the states, targeting the LGBTQ community. Uh, and, and now, you know, I, I think the message to me was a red flag to everybody else that if you dare to stand up, with anybody who's marginalized, then we're going to paint you as one of them too, right? It's the idea that you can't be one of us because, you know, we're, we're moms and we're speaking on behalf of Christian moms. So you're one of them. Uh, and it's time to hit back. You're right. And especially in the sense that we're seeing more of these attacks on the LGBTQ plus community happening uh, across the country in Florida recently. And now in Ohio, House Bill 616 has been introduced, uh, similar to Ohio, uh, Florida's uh, known as don't say gay bill. So why do you think we're starting to see more of this now um, and happening so quickly? You know, it, it, it is a, it's a playbook we've seen time and time again throughout history. And I remember when I was running for office for the first time in 2018 and knocking on doors in some parts of my district, and I would ask people, what's the biggest issue for you right now? And a surprising number of people said uh, the caravan at the border and, and Michigan borders Canada. So not only are we not close to the southern border, but, it, but it's this idea that there's always a movement to deflect and to blame a group. And that group changes sometimes. Sometimes it's black residents. Sometimes it's immigrants at the border. And right now it's the LGBTQ community. Um, but it happens time and time again. And, you know, I, I think that it's cowardly because it's easy to punch down. It's easy to hit a group uh, that's smaller than your group. And, and we're seeing that playbook replicated right now. And, and what's especially horrifying to me is it's targeting kids. You know, it is banning kids from playing sports with their friends, which does nothing to help improve your life or whatever your daily issues are. It just hurts that kid and, and their family. And, you know, the, the don't say gay bill and, and replicas around the country, just denying that anybody who's not straight identifies as straight doesn't exist. You know, we're, nobody's teaching sexual attraction and sex to children. We just want to acknowledge there are a lot of different types of people who exist and kids are curious and should be able to ask questions about the people in the world around them. And there are a lot of questions, you know, from voters who are thinking there are so many issues, you know, that we're dealing with that are real issues that aren't being addressed as a result of so much time being spent on issues that are non-existent and not really an issue for voters right now or an issue at all. So what do you think can really get things back on track so we can move away from focusing on these false false issues and addressing the real issues that voters are concerned about right now? Well, well I think it's exactly that. I think we have to not be afraid to point that exact thing out, to say this is made up. 
This is not an issue that, you know, you knew about or cared about even a couple of weeks ago, but now there's all this rhetoric about, um, you know, groomers and all of these things being taught in school or uh, the phrase, you know, biological males, which I've had a few phone calls that I've received in my office of people being upset about, about that. And I just want to ask, have you ever used this phrase before? And the answer is no. So I think that is what, what we have to say very clearly is that people who are pushing these narratives are lying to their own supporters. They are lying to the people who support them to try to make them so angry and hateful at somebody else to redirect their anger so that they forget and they don't focus their anger on the people who are elected to represent them who aren't doing anything to actually help them. That's absolutely true. And it's all about the next generation, really. We're seeing these bills that are targeting the next generation, the ones that are going to be speaking out about all of these issues. Um, so definitely, what is your message to those the next generation of you know kids in America who are watching this from the sidelines um, and the ones that are getting involved? So what's your message to them and your hopes for them as well? I mean, my message, first of all, is don't believe the headlines. You know, I, I met with a school group uh, on Monday in my district at one of our high schools. and the, one of the first questions was from a girl who said, you know, I identify as, as somebody in the LGBTQ community and, and why, why is this happening? Why is there all this hatred targeted at me? So number one, I, every kid, regardless of where you are on the gender spectrum or, or what your race or background or identity is, is we got you, we see you, we got you, we support you. Um, we, even though you can't vote yet, you can get involved, you know, contact your elected officials, find out how to participate, volunteer on a campaign. That was something that was amazing. When I ran, we had a lot of high schoolers and middle schoolers come out and volunteer and, and support people who take you seriously because you are the next generation and you matter and your voices matter. And we need to make sure we're not supporting people who shut your voices down. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have seen your speech and have been inspired and have really taken to it because it's really just been what they've been thinking this whole time about all of the different things that are happening. So what is your message to those people that are now watching and starting to follow this journey? I'm going to uh, quote my mom here, who I, I talked to yesterday uh, to catch up with her. And, and she said to me, she's like, you know, I'm really proud of you, Mal, but it can't just be you. You know, there's a lot of people who have watched this speech, but if you're the only one who gives it, then it's not going to work. So to everybody who saw it, find a way to use your voice and take an action because that is how we stop this. That is how hate doesn't win is when we all stand up and say enough is enough. Enough is enough. Michigan State Senator Mallory McMurrow, thank you so much for your time. Jaden, thank you. Mm -hmm.